Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be looking at the harder healing pad version over the easier healing pad version that we did last video. So if I demonstrate it here, if it gets some damage, and if we come over, it heals us and you see the nice animation and that we've been healed in the top right corner. Hey, right, let's get started. Okay, so now in studio we're going to be showing you how to make your own hard healing pads. Uh, this is really easy to do. You can make your own design for the healing pad because I've made the script so that it can have any customized design. Hey, okay, but in this video I'm going to be showing you how to make my design. So the first thing we're going to do is place a cylinder part into our world. And then we're going to rotate it with the rotary tool upwards like so and then I'm going to scale it to the right position that's quite a nice disc shape there that we're going to use okay okay so now of our pad we're going to have, want to create the border effect that we've got over here that's really easy to do so what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this this part here with control D on the keyboard then we see we've got two identical parts and then we're going to change one of these parts so that the scale is 0.5 offset each side like so so we've got a, a smaller part here and a bigger part that's what we want okay and then we're going to want to duplicate the smaller parts with control d again and then we're going to use that later Okay, so one of the smaller parts, we want to make it called a negative part, and we're going to use that for the union later. Now to get a nice black border effect, we're going to get the bigger part, and we're going to change its colour to black. And then we're going to highlight the negative part here, along with the, the big border part, and then we're going to union them. Now you'll see that we've got a nice black border here. And then inside the centre, we've got what will eventually be the green healing pad. So to make that green, we're going to colour, and we're going to select green, like so. Now to make it slightly more anaesthetic, I'm going to change the move stud to 0.1, and I'm going to slightly decrease the size of the green pad so that it's below the border. I just think that looks nicer. So there's our little pad, we're now going to group it, we're selecting all of the parts, going to home, and then group. So here's our model. I'm now going to be showing you how to script the model. One thing I need to mention before we begin scripting is that we need to name this part to be coloured. Part, like so. Hey, okay, now we can begin the scripting by pressing the little plus icon here, going to script, and that will automatically place our script inside. And we can remove that hello world bit. Okay, let's start our script with the custom values. You can change these with whatever you like. So again, local, cooldown, duration. I can put it to 3 for this one, but you can change it to whatever you like. Then the amount of health the pad gives you. I'm going to set that to 20. This can be whatever you like. This is the customizable bit. Okay, now we're going to start the actual script by inserting our services. This is really easy to do by inserting the player service. and the tween surface. The tween service we use later for actually changing the colour of the part and the player service we use to check if the player, sorry the part that touches the healing pad is a player other than something else. Okay now that done we need to get our model value and our coloured part, the part
part that we're going to change the colour when the, the, someone touches the pad. Okay, with that all done, I'm now going to do the basic tween information. <coughs> so basically, whenever setting up a tween, you have to give some data with it. So you have to say, how long is the tween going to last? What's the nice animation effect? So this is what we're going to do here. Okay, so we're going to start here by saying local info, so the tween info. It's tween info dot new. And then the length of the tweens, that's going to be our cooldown duration. And then the next part is the start of the tween. So that's how it actually animates the colour movement. So it could be that it changes the colour rapidly, or it gets faster and faster and faster, or it gets slower and slower and slower. But we don't want that. We just want it to be consistently until it finishes. And the way that and the start that is is linear. So we're going to do elm dot easing style dot linear. Okay, that's our info done. Okay, now we're going to set up our debounce value. And as I explained in the other video, that basically allows the, um, the script to only give health to someone after the cooldown duration has been completed from the previous player. Okay, now let's begin with our function. So if you haven't heard of Luda functions, this basically allows um, this part of the code to be executed every single time um, someone touches the part. And I'll explain more on that later. So I'm going to call this function on player touch. And then we're going to give a parameter of that function to be the part of the part that has touched the healing pad. Uh, first thing we're going to do in here is find the character of that part. Okay, so if that is not a character, then we need to say if it if it actually does exist, then continue the script. Else end it there. Now we're going to find the humanoid of the character. And again, we're going to say, if it actually exists, then continue the script. Okay, next, same with the previous video, we're going to see if the humanoid health is more than zero. Because we obviously don't want to give health to something that's already dead. There's no point. So that's saying, if the humanoid health is more than zero, then continue the script. Okay, now we're going to see if the the character is actually linked to a player. And I'll explain this better in the other video. So basically, each player has a character. Now if I explain it better, it's better here. Every time a player walks in to the game, they're given a character, and then this is your character here. It's a part that actually moves around and that you can control. And then your player is your bit up here. So this is your player, this is your character. Now, if you're given a bot, so if you're given a bot a dummy here, and it hits your healing pad, then it, it, it has a character, it's got a character over here, it's got a whole character build, but it doesn't have a player, there'll never be a player for it. So we're going to actually see if the part that touches the healing pad is a player. And that's what our code does there. So if the player does exist, then continue the script. Okay, now we're going to see if we're actually ready for the player to get health. So we're going to see if the cooldown has been completed from the last player who has touched it. We're going to do that with our debounce value. So if debounce equals false, then continue the script. At the moment, 
Then we do that, we want to change the bounce to true because then we're going to give the player some health. This is the this is the part of the script that actually gives the humanoid some health. And then we're going to increase the health by the amount of health given. Uh, this is where we're actually going to change the colour of the coloured part. Now we're going to do that with the colour property of the part. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change the part colour to be black. Now colour 3 is the Roblox way of storing colours. So 0, 0, 0 is black. 0, 1, 0, 0 will be a different colour, etc, etc. Now the green is 0, 1, 0. So we're going to have to slightly, we're going to have to incrementally change the black colour to be the green colour. And we do that with the tween service. So we're going to say local tween equals tween service create so creating a new tween then we're going to do it on the coloured part so we don't want to change any other part we're going to use the tween info that we created at the start and then we're going to change it to the green colour so that's with colour equals colour3.new and then the green colour as I said not one not so that should incrementally change the black colour to the green colour. Uh, now we actually need to set that tween up to actually run. And we do that with quick tween dot play. And then afterwards that we're going to wait until the tween has completed. And that bit line of code there is going to wait until the tween has completed before resuming. And that's going to be as long as our cooldown cool duration that we set up over here. And then after that, we're going to say, now we are ready for another person to get healed up. So we're going to say, change the debounce to false. So that's our main part of the script done. We actually need to set it up so that the part is actually going to run this script when it's touched. Okay. So do you remember at the start how I explained how you can have any custom part configuration in your healing pad? Well, this is going. This is how it's going to work. So we're going to work. It's going to work by getting all of the parts. So not the script. All of the parts in your in your model and seeing when someone touches it. Now I'm going to do that very simply by first of all getting all of the children of the model. So it's all of these bits here. Now this code here is going to run for each child of the model, that's the script, the unit and the colour part. Obviously we can't say if a player has touched the script because it's not actually a part. So we need to say if the actual part is, is a part. So if the child is a part, then we're going to continue on with the script. And then we're going to say, when someone touches that part, then we're going to run this nice function, um, function here that we set up. That's very easy to do. Make sure you get the brackets right because it automatically sets up wrongly sometimes. Like what just happened there. Okay, that's the end of our script now. So if we go into our world and we test it. We should find that when we touch it, it changes. Now you might notice that it moves around a little bit. And that's because I forgot to anchor the parts. So the best way to fix this is to highlight your model and go anchor. And now we load in. So it's no longer moving out, it's in a fixed position. That's anchoring the part. So if you see if you get some damage, 
can damage ourselves. If we touch the part and it heals us, as expected. Okay, that's the end of our video today. I hope that helps you. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. See ya.